everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got something really exciting to talk about, an open source AI model that's shaking things up in the community. If you're into AI, open source projects, or just love seeing tech innovation happen right before your eyes, you're in the right place. Before we dive in, quick reminder to smash that like button, hit subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future tech breakdowns. Your support helps this channel grow, and I'm super grateful for each and every one of you. Today, we're diving into Chromar groundbreaking AI model built on the Flux.1 Schnell Foundation. And let me tell you, it's pretty awesome. So, let's get right into it. What is Chroma? So, what exactly is Chroma? Well, in a nutshell, it's an AI model designed to be open, uncensored, and totally community driven. The best part? It's built on the Flux.1 Schnell architecture, which means it's powerful, efficient, and ready to be adapted to just about anything you can think of. Unlike some other models that are restricted or tightly controlled by corporations, Chroma is fully licensed under Apache 2.0. This means you're free to use it, modify it, and build on top of it without any strings attached. That's pretty rare in the world of AI models. For context, many leading AI models operate under restrictive licenses that limit what you can do with them. Some prevent commercial use, others restrict modifications, and many have content filters that can't be bypassed. Chroma breaks away from these limitations, giving power back to the community. Why was Chroma created? The idea behind Chroma is Simple Make, a model that's not only powerful, but also accessible to everyone. The creators noticed a gap in the AI community. Many existing models either had limitations or weren't fully open source. Chroma aims to change that. It's designed to handle a wide range of content, from anime and furry art to photography and more artistic styles. The model is being trained on a massive data set, 5 million images carefully curated from a pool of 20 million samples. That's right, 20 million. This makes Chroma incredibly versatile. To put that in perspective, many competitive AI models train on data sets of around 1 minus 2 million images. The extensive training data helps Chroma understand a broader range of visual concepts and styles, making it more adaptable to different creative needs. The curation process itself is fascinating. The team developed specialized filtering algorithms to ensure diversity and quality in the training data. They didn't just grab random images from the internet, they carefully selected samples that would contribute meaningfully to the model's capabilities. Uncensored and inclusive. One of the standout features of Chroma is that it's uncensored. It aims to reintroduce some of the anatomical concepts that were missing from other models. Essentially, it gives creators more freedom to experiment without worrying about built-in content filters. This doesn't mean Chroma is designed for inappropriate content, rather. It recognizes that artistic expression often includes the human form, and creators should have the freedom to explore these subjects without arbitrary restrictions. For artists working on figure studies, fantasy art, or medical illustrations, this is a huge advantage. The team behind Chroma believes that responsibility should lie with the user, not be hard-coded into the model. This philosophy aligns perfectly with the open source ethos provide the tools, trust the community to use them responsibly. Where is Chroma now? Right now, Chroma is still in training, but the developers are sharing their progress openly. You can check out their debug repository on Hugging Face, view the training logs live, and even browse through some examples on Civit AI. I'll leave the links in the description if you're curious. What's particularly impressive is the transparency of the development process. Most AI models are developed behind closed doors, with only the final product being shared. 
With Chroma, you can literally watch it learn and improve day by day. This level of openness is refreshing in the AI community. The current iteration shows promising results, especially in areas where other models struggle like hands, faces, and complex compositions. The developers release regular updates, showcasing improvements and addressing community feedback. It's like watching a digital artist evolve in real time, a huge community effort. Chroma wouldn't be possible without the community's support. Special shout out to Fictional.ai for their amazing help in pushing open source AI forward. Plus, keeping this project running is no small feat. It's already taken over 6,000 hours on high powered GPUs. To put that in perspective, if you were to rent comparable GPU resources on a cloud platform, you'd be looking at costs well into the six figures. This is truly a labor of love from the community, funded by enthusiasts who believe in accessible AI technology. The collaborative nature of the project is evident in how feedback is incorporated. When users notice issues or suggest improvements, the development team is quick to respond and adjust. This iterative approach, guided by community input, is helping Chroma evolve faster than many corporate-backed models how you can get involved. If you're passionate about open source AI and want to support the project, there's a Ko-Fi link where you can contribute. Every little bit helps to keep Chroma training and improving. But financial support isn't the only way to get involved. The project welcomes contributions in many forms, from helping with documentation, to reporting bugs, suggesting features, or even contributing code if you have the technical skills. It's a true community project in every sense. For those who are just starting out, simply using the model and sharing your results helps spread awareness and provides valuable feedback. The development team actively monitors community creations to identify areas for improvement. Running Chroma yourself. Thinking about running Chroma on your own setup, you can use Comfy UI and even try some of the pre-trained models available on Civit AI. Plus, they've made it pretty straightforward to get started. The basic setup involves downloading a few files, the T5 20L model, Florida UX VAE, and the Chroma checkpoint. Once you've got those, load the Chroma workflow in Comfy UI and you're good to go. For those who aren't familiar with Comfy UI, it's a powerful interface that makes working with AI models much more intuitive. Think of it as a visual programming environment for AI image generation. You connect different nodes together to create a workflow that suits your specific needs. It's much more flexible than the simple text to image interfaces you might be used to. Hardware requirements are substantial, but not unreasonable. You'll need a decent GPU with at least eight gigabytes of VRAM for basic usage, though 12 gigabytes or more is recommended for optimal performance. The model can also be quantized to run on lower end hardware, though with some trade-offs in speed and quality. The tech behind Chroma. Now, for those who love diving into the technical side, Chroma underwent some pretty smart changes during development. The original Flux model was trimmed down from 12 billion to 8.9 billion parameters. That's a huge reduction without losing performance. This was achieved by removing redundant parts of the model that were taking up space but not really contributing to the final output. For example, one layer had 3.3 billion parameters just to encode a single value. Replacing it with a simple function saved tons of space while keeping accuracy intact. This optimization process, known as model pruning, is an art in itself. The team used sophisticated analysis tools to identify which parts of the network were most important for image generation. By preserving these critical pathways while simplifying others, they created a more efficient model without sacrificing capability. Another improvement is something called MMDIT masking. 
It fixes an issue where the model was focusing too much on unnecessary padding tokens, which could mess up image generation. By optimizing how these tokens are handled, Chroma became more stable and reliable. For the tech enthusiasts out there, this is a variation of attention masking in transformer models. The innovation lies in how it's applied specifically to diffusion models, preventing attention drift and ensuring that the model focuses on the parts of the prompt that actually matter for image generation. The architecture itself is Fasenatinga hybrid approach that combines the best elements of diffusion models with transformer-based text understanding. This allows Chroma to both interpret complex prompts and generate high-quality images based on them. Chroma versus other models. When comparing Chroma to other models in the space, several things stand out. First, there's the open nature of the project, which we've already discussed, but there are also technical differences worth noting. Many popular models like Stable Diffusion or Midjourney have their own strengths and weaknesses. Stable Diffusion is open source, but still has some limitations in its license. Midjourney produces beautiful images, but operates as a closed system. Chroma aims to combine the best aspects of both approaches the beautiful outputs of closed models with the flexibility and freedom of open source software. Early results suggest it's well on its way to achieving this goal. In terms of specific capabilities, Chroma shows particular strength in areas that have traditionally been challenging for AI art models. Hands, faces, and text within images all show impressive coherence. The model also excels at maintaining consistent styles across different prompts, making it ideal for projects that require a unified aesthetic. Chroma, faster than ever. Here's something that's going to blow your mind. Chroma is super fast. Compared to a GGUF quantized version of the model, Chroma outperforms it by a mile. For instance, running a GGUF Q6 version on an RTX 3070 takes around seven minutes to generate an image with 20 steps. With Chroma, it takes just about one minute. That's right, Chroma cuts down the processing time dramatically, making it a great choice if you're looking for speed without sacrificing quality. This speed improvement comes from several optimizations. First, there's the reduced parameter count we discussed earlier. But beyond that, the developers have implemented specialized CUDA kernels that make better use of GPU resources. They've also optimized the attention mechanisms to reduce computational overhead. For creators working on multiple iterations or large batches of images, this speed advantage is huge. What might take an entire day with other models can be accomplished in a couple of hours with Chroma. Real world applications. So what can you actually do with Chroma? The applications are virtually limitless, but here are some exciting possibilities. Game development studios can use it to rapidly prototype concept art, environments, and character designs. Independent artists can leverage it to explore new styles and generate reference images for their work. Content creators can produce unique thumbnails, illustrations, and visual assets for their channels or websites. Educators can create custom visual aids for complex subjects, making learning more engaging. Some early adopters are already using Chroma in workflows that would have been unimaginable just a few years ago. One indie game developer I spoke with is using it to generate entire asset libraries for their projects, saving thousands of dollars in art costs. Another creator is using it to produce custom illustrations for a fantasy novel, generating consistent character art across hundreds of scenes. The future of Chroma. Looking ahead, the roadmap for Chroma is ambitious. The development team has plans for fine-tuned versions specialized for different artistic styles, improved text handling, and even animation capabilities. 
There's also talk of eventually expanding beyond image generation into other creative domains. While still in the conceptual stage, these extensions could potentially bring Chroma's philosophy of open, accessible AI to areas like music generation, 3D modeling, or even interactive storytelling. The community aspect will remain central to this evolution. As more creators adopt and experiment with Chroma, their feedback and contributions will shape the project's direction. This organic growth is something you rarely see with corporate AI products. A final word, Chroma is still in development, but it's already proving to be a powerful, flexible, and community-driven model. Whether you're an AI enthusiast, an artist, or just curious about how these models work, Chroma is definitely something to keep an eye on. What excites me most about projects like this is how they democratize access to cutting edge AI technology. Just a few years ago, this kind of capability would have been exclusive to research labs with million dollar budgets. Now it's available to anyone with a decent GPU and an interest in the field. If you liked this breakdown, make sure to subscribe for more AI content. Drop a comment below, let me know what you think of Chroma or if you plan to try it out yourself. Are there specific aspects of the model you'd like me to explore in a future video? I read all your comments and take your suggestions seriously. As always, thank you for watching. Until next time, keep creating, keep innovating, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI.